Welcome to our lecture online. Here we are on part two of the same problem we started on the previous video where we're trying to find the surface area of an ellipsoid and we're getting close. We ended up over here with an integral we could fairly easily do or look up if you don't remember how to do it but this is what this becomes. So we have the area is equal to 4 pi b over a. Now notice since we have x limits here we want to get back to where we started with so instead of writing c we can write the square root of this which is the square root of a squared minus b squared divided by a so that is the c squared equals this so c is equal to the square root of that the square root of a squared is a times the integral oh no we're going to integrate now so this becomes let's see here that becomes x times the square root of d squared minus x squared and of course d squared can be written as a squared over c squared so let's go ahead and do that so instead of writing d squared we're going to write a squared over c squared minus x squared and then this would be plus or minus what was that again I think it's plus here we end up with d squared times the inverse sign of x over d now d of course is equal to a over c so this becomes a and this becomes c so it'll be x over d but d is a over c all right and that's going to be evaluated from x equals zero to x equals a that's why we have to convert everything back from d to a well well we're not done yet because we can't have the c's in there we need to go back to this so continue to simplify so we have a is equal to 4 pi b over a squared times the square root of a squared minus b squared times here we have x times the square root of a squared now remember that c squared was a squared minus b squared over a squared so divide by c squared well that would make this equal to let's see here divide by c that makes this a squared minus b squared times a squared in the numerator ah there's our a to the fourth again remember in the previous video we had an a to the fourth in the numerator so there we're good so a squared over c squared and c squared is a squared minus b squared over a squared so we're good there um, minus x squared plus d squared which is plus a squared over c squared times the inverse sine of wow I'm going to get rid of the words let because I need some space here uh, inverse sine of x over a times c which would be a oh no a squared minus b squared so that would be the square root of a squared minus b squared over a evaluate it from 0 to a wow what a mess but if I didn't make any mistakes we're getting close all right let's plug all that in and see what we end up with we end up with an a times the square root of a to the fourth over a squared minus b squared minus a squared aha that allows us to pull out an a squared here we're good plus a squared over c squared hmm so I still need to write this as a squared minus b squared divided by a squared which now goes to the numerator becomes a to the fourth there times the inverse sine of when I plug in an a for x I get a divided by a that cancels out so I end up with the square root of a squared minus b squared over a and now realizing when I plug in the lower limit if I put in a zero here this whole term goes to zero and if I plug in a zero here this goes to zero and the inverse sine of zero is zero so it's we don't have to worry about the lower limit we just have the upper limit luckily so now this is what we have left now we need to simplify some things so notice I can pull out an a square over here and 
I have a pull out of radical that becomes a, a times a is a squared, and I have an a squared here, which can come in here and cancels out this a squared, so I end up with a is equal to four pi b. The a squared now will be gone times the square root of a squared minus b squared times. This a is gone, this a squared is gone, so we have the square root of a squared over a squared minus b squared minus one, plus one of those a squared is gone so we have a squared divided by a squared minus b squared times the inverse sine of the quantity square root a squared minus b squared divided by a. Now notice that this should only be a positive number and since a is bigger than b the numerator will always be greater than zero and a will always be bigger than the square root of a squared minus b squared, so this looks like it's fine. Put a bracket like this, and notice I can get rid of this and this, ah, but I need to combine that, I need the common denominator here. So let's, if I write this over common denominator, I get a is equal to 4 pi b times the square root of a squared minus b squared times the quantity that would be a squared minus a squared minus b squared like this all over a squared minus b squared and that's inside the radical like that and then we have plus a squared over a squared minus b squared times the inverse sine of all this I'm out of room so this will be duplicated there but now, notice what we have. We have a square root of a squared minus b squared, and we have an a squared minus b squared underneath the square root. So those cancel out, and we can cancel out one of those. So that means that we now have area, or uh, yeah, area is equal to 4 pi times b. This is now gone. So that we have times. We have an a squared minus a squared, that cancels, and negative times the negative becomes positive. And notice that the square root of b squared, that simply gives us a b times b plus a divided by the square root of a squared minus b squared because we canceled this by the square root of that, okay? And then times the inverse sine of the square root of a squared minus b squared over a like this and let me move that over just a little bit a is equal to so it looks a little cleaner like that and I need a bracket and now it looks like we found the surface area of an ellipsoid notice that a and b are general constants a and b can be anything but area is 4 pi b times the quantity b plus a over the square root of a squared minus b squared times the arc sine of the quantity square root of a squared minus b squared over a. Wow! And now, if you have a certain a, a certain b, you can plug that in and get the exact area of an ellipsoid that way. That's quite remarkable. Um, wow. Yes. I always wondered how they found the area of an ellipsoid, and this is definitely one way in which it can be done. And that is how it's done. Just guess? <laughs> All right, well, let's see if I did it correctly. Um, Could you just plug into the area of the left side? Isn't there a formula? Yeah, I need to look that up. I don't, I don't know offhand what the area of an ellipsoid is, the surface area of an ellipsoid. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's going to be very close to 4 pi r squared, r being either a or b, right? So somewhere in between. So whatever the number is, it should be very close to 4 pi times the average radius squared. So somewhere between b and a. But yeah, that's... Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess you can also find the limit, right? If, if B goes to zero, 
then you get zero area. If A becomes equal to B, now that's interesting. If A becomes equal to B, um, yeah, but what happens here? Then we get a zero in the denominator. Ooh, that's bad. But then the inverse sign of zero is also zero, so we get a zero over zero condition. And then if we take the limit of that, it depends which goes to zero quicker, uh, we end up with zero, and if b equals a, we get four pi a squared or b squared. So that should work. Yeah, it should work. Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting result, but there it is. That's the answer for the uh, surface area of an ellipsoid, believe it or not.